Hey guys, uh, this is Lei from Goldfish Corner. Welcome back. And today we're going to talk about another interesting topic. How to read the water. If you are new, please subscribe my channel. And also pay attention to the video description. There's a lot of uh, reference and information links. Have you ever wondering how to read goldfish in the ancient time? And uh, back then, there was no electronic device. Basically, there's no filter, no pump, and no LED lights. There's no fancy chemical treatment for disease. They don't even have the water test kit to know the pH level, ammonia level, or know the hardness of the water. The key question is, how do we even know the water quality? Well, over the last thousand years, the traditional Chinese goldfish technology actually accumulated some knowledge. They basically utilize the human feelings. We have a look, touch, smell, and sip. So today I'm not going to release all the uh, secrets, but I may give you some example as a simple tip how to read your water quality. As we know, goldfish keeping all about keeping the water. There's an old saying in Chinese, read the water before read your fish, which is saying the importance of the water. What is water color? Basically, the color of your water under the natural light. There are several factors going to affect your water color, such as algae and plankton, um, mineral irons, organic matter, your fish food residual, and even fish waste. So among all these factors, the algae and the plankton going to be the main factor going to affect your water color. The idea is if you can read the water color, you can read the quality of the water. There's uh, two ways to develop the right color of water. One is develop the unicellular algae. The second one is obviously the beneficial bacteria. So today we're going to talk about look the water color and from the water color you can tell whether it's a good water or it's a bad water. I basically I'm going to give you four good water color. Start the first one. The first one we call a tea color. It including all the brown algae diatoms or uh, silica algae uh, they are dominant. I like this picture I downloaded from Wikipedia. It has all different type of brown algae, nine different cell shape of algae but they all single cell and has the, all the dominant color of the brown. That is why when you have all these brown cells in your water, your water tends to a brown, it looks just like a cup of tea color. You don't have sufficient sunlight. It's actually pretty good nutrition for good fish fry. That is a rancho tank uh, in one of the good fish farm. You can see the, the color of the water is just a, a light brown and just like a tea color. I gonna rank personally give the quality rank at a three stars. It's still good water. Um, the only thing I did not give a full star, and because brown algae may also transition to other type of algae, and also the, the brown color is just not that vivid as the other type of water color that I'm gonna talk to you. So I leave it a three star for this one. Um, the second one, which is my favorite one, is a light green or bright green color. And this is the second type of good water color. The green algae in the other name is phytoplankton. Green algae is dominant. There is a lot of those free single cell floating in your tank. Your water becomes a green. The water transparency is actually not that bad. It can reach 20 to 35 centimeter. In the other words, 10 to 14 inches from this beautiful tank picture. You can see sort of have a neon green, very light and bright green. But you can still see the fish. You can still see through the tank. It obviously need a natural sunlight. If you don't have natural sunlight, you need a, a full spectrum of LED lights. This water can do the magic trick. The green algae absorb the ammonia nitrite and nitrate to decompose poisonous chemical and remove the poisonous. The water color and water quality are actually pretty stable. It's typical fit for the high temperature in the summertime. And from quality rank, I gave a five star. And this is my favorite one. One of the reason is because the water color is a cycle. Even though you slip to the later cycle of this green water, that is still safe. So if you able to maintain your water color in this light green color, your fish is gonna be, has a vibrant color, stay healthy. The third one, 
which is a combination. I call this yellowish green color. As you can guess, it's basically a balanced mix between green algae and brown algae. As you can see on this screen, that's kind of a clip from my documentary of the goldfish of China. That is the color typical using the goldfish farm in China. It's very stable, and not only in the color, but also quality and provide a good nutrition for food. I gave the rank of the four star out of five. So it's, a, it's pretty good. The only thing I did not give a five star is because the color, you know, personally, I like the green because that means fresh and alive. The last good quality color, which is number four, is the dark green color. If the green algae keep growing and green algae become dominant, it's relatively close to old age of the green algae. Sometimes I call it old water. As you can see on this video clip, this is actually take from another goldfish farm in China. It's actually in the southern part of China from Fujian province. All the tank water stay with dark green color. But keep in mind, the dark green doesn't mean it's muddy. It's not turbid, it's still clear. The water transparency is not as good as light green, but it's still you're able to see about four inches or 10 centimeter of water depth. And that is the dark green color. They can do the same magic. All the green algae can absorb ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. And the other thing I wanna highlight, the dark green color is actually reduce the stress in the fish. If you sort of a quarantine your fish, or if you have a new fish after the long transportation, you can keep the fish in the dark green fish, in sorry, in the dark green color, and it actually reduces the stress in the fish. That's pretty good. It's actually fit for low temperatures, such as during the fall or winter. Uh, the quality rank, I give four star up to five. I'll tell you, you the reason why I leave one star empty. Um, but I also want to share a tip is, uh, no matter which color of water, if the water is good, when you're using the air stones or when you're using the aeration, there are two things gonna indicating the good water. One is water splash. If you can see here, water splash is white. And also the water foams gonna quickly disappear. The foam is not accumulated. Those are two factors indicating the water is good. All right, now we have all the four type of a good water color, tea color, light green color, yellowish green color, and dark green color. So those are the four good color. Now I wanna give you a bad example for bad water color. Every time if you see uh, one of those four bad colors, give immediately full water change. The first one, I call it a re-clear water. When you in the dark green water, if the green algae keep growing and the algae is overgrown, and those algae is actually compete oxygen, compete nutrition, and also compete resources. If the green algae overgrow, it ended up, it's gonna all dead. Eventually, you notice the dark green suddenly turns to clear. This is actually bad news. You need to change water right away. And the other indicator, if, if you see the form, if you see the form start accumulate on the surface, that is also not good. Your water basically spoiled. The pH is gonna drop sharply because all the green algae died and they actually created acid. Do a full water change immediately. That is also the reason why I did not give the dark green water as a five star. It's because if the dark green overgrow become re-clear water, that's actually bad. So that's why I leave dark green as a full star. The second bad water color, which I think is less common as the previous one, but it could happen, it's called a bluish green color. It's almost like a patina color, sort of like a brownish green on outside bronze color. Is oscillatory and microcystine overgrow. Uh, as you can see the microscopic picture on the bottom of this slice, and the water transparency is actually gonna drop. You're not gonna see very far. So it's about a 20 centimeter and eight inch uh, fish may still survive, but it's gonna grow very slow. And also the color gonna gonna lose the color also. If you see the bluish green color, do the water change right away. The, the third bad water color is called a milky color. It's basically you have too much zooplankton, such as the Sicilies, rotifers. The outbreak, they basically eat. <laughs> it's very interesting. So all the zooplankton 
eat all the planktons or algae and you have all the zooplankton overgrowth. Obviously, you're gonna have a low oxygen level, your pH gonna drops. When you see this milky color water, you have to do the water change right away. The last bad water color, I call it soy sauce color. It's basically a dark red color. I, I don't think this is gonna happen in the indoor tank that often because you're gonna notice right away you're gonna change it. It's pretty much for the pond water, so pay attention to your pond water. It's basically those two flagellate and the protosa outbreak like you see on the microscopic picture on the bottom. Low oxygen level is actually high hardness uh, which is gonna be uh, not good for your goldfish. It tends to happen more for the underground water source uh, in the summertime so if your pond water is using underground water pay attention for this type of uh, uh, color in the summer and obviously if you see that you're gonna do the full water change immediately. All right, and that's it. So that's all the four good watercolor, and also I talk about the four bad watercolor. And now I wanna share a few thoughts. So first of all, um, this is underneath the traditional Chinese gold fishing techniques, which means everything's based on menu, based on your hands. I only share some simple tips. This is not all the secrets. As a matter of fact, I don't think I even know all the secrets, but if I know something, I'll, I'll share with you guys. Um, the second one is all this, reading the water tips probably fit more for outdoor tanks and i would see but it could be a good reference for the indoor fish tank or for the indoor fish aquarium no matter which tips what to go to fish book when you read you have to be critical thinking this is very important don't say yes or don't say no you have to tiy which means to try it yourself try it yourself you will learn whether it works or not even for the tips that I give to you. My personal thought is how to utilize the traditional techniques with the modern techniques. Um, my position is I like to have a hybrid method, uh, which means the traditional method or traditional technique is all more like a, a qualitative approach. So basically you can get a quick result, and but you, don't, you can get a categorical result, but not a very digitalized result. The modernized uh, techniques, such as you know, all the meters, pH meters, or ammonia alerts, when you use this one, that gives you quantitative results. The last one is uh, be, be open-minded. As I said, there's no, nothing wrong in goldfish keeping. So be always open-minded and always uh, be active learners. I think that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching. If you like this content, give me a big like and subscribe my channel for, for more stuff. I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.